Hi everybody and welcome back to Vio Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Let's dive right into today's very exciting video as I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side comparisons streaming completely wirelessly to the PC VR in Steam VR of course using Half-Life Alex with an RTX 2070, i7 9700K, Hero Maximus 11 motherboard with some NVMe and all these kind of good stuff. Now I will be upgrading the PC after the RTX 4000 series graphics cards are going to be released in Singapore which will probably most be I would say in November or December and also I am using Wi-Fi 5 just so you know because Wi-Fi 6 is still very new here the actual router is more than 600 US dollars so it's a lot a lot of money so I am using Wi-Fi 5 and I do believe that at the moment most people are actually using an RTX 2070 or even lower than that so I think it's very very convenient to be using these kind of graphics card at it is most as I mentioned before people that are using this kind of technology today and it is very unsure if people are using Wi-Fi 6 to be honest with you also around the globe as well now you will noticeably see some very flagrant differences when I'm doing some magnification and zooming in to the actual images on the actual footage that you see at the moment now on the actual left hand side of your screen i am showing the 90 hertz smooth mode which is around 720p and also on the left hand side the 90 hertz hd mode which is streaming at 1080p now this is converted on the actual software let's say however all the images that you see on your screen at the moment are captured directly from the actual headset itself not from the screen recording of let's say Half-Life Alex on the PC itself so this is really really awesome to be able to do that from the actual Pico 4 and the Pico 4 itself allows me to capture the footage directly from inside of the headset as opposed to have to use for example OBS and record separately on the computer so this also allows me to make sure that I can get more frames per second as I'm streaming from the actual PC directly inside of the headset Full disclosure, I am using a test Pico 4 headset for today's recording and I do have written permission to do so. So if you are from Pico, hi to you, hope you're doing very well and thank you again for providing us a written permission to use a test headset for today's recording. Now I also would like to say that the USB-C tethered experience does work for my test headset as well. However, I will not be using a tethered experience for the purpose of today's video however if you do wish me to use or to show you the graphic differences between let's say the HP Reverb G2 and also the Pico 4 tethered experience please do smash the likes let's try to get to 50 likes if possible and for sure I will be more than willing to show you this experience in a future video and do hit the notification bell also after you subscribe because there are so many new apps available in the Pico 4 guys for example the Walking Dead Saint and Sinners is going to be coming very soon as well we have Gorn that is coming soon as well Town Caper, Space Parrot, Knock, Battle Sister so many other apps that have been also added to the store not too long ago including Contractors, Zero Caliber and many, many more, including O-Shape, Engage, Deism, Rico Shooter, Viking Days, Art Pulse, Snow Fortress, Racket NX, Pangman, and Space, Bullet Roulette, Dino Crisis, Voice Room, Meet in VR, Last Labyrinth, Virtual Speech, Crisis VR Brigade, Flying Hero, Super Hot VR, Wonder Glade, The Exorcist, Down the Rabbit Hole, Wands, X Fitness, Synth Riders, and so many, many more other VR experiences available inside of the Pico 4. So do hit the notification bell after you smash the likes so you don't miss all these potential reviews of gameplay in the Pico 4 that I will upload very soon. 
And to make it easier for today's purpose of the video, I have also added some timestamps below. So do feel free to skip to wherever you wish you want to go that might be relevant to you. And of course, of course, excuse me, do play back some of your favorite scenes in today's video as there is a lot of side by side. And noticeably, now when I'm not zooming in in terms of the macro, it can be a little bit harder to know what are the differences in terms of the graphics, especially when it comes to the compression inside of the actual footage. So do make sure you pause here and there to see the differences between the side by side, especially when I zoom into the actual footage, because noticeably there are some differences. Now, first of all, when I am running the 90 Hertz at HD mode, I am actually, as you could see from the footage, sitting not far from my router. I am about, let's say, a couple of meters away. Now, you will see at the end of this video as to why I'm doing side by side comparisons where I'm right next to the router. However, when I'm running the smooth mode, which is the 70, uh, 7020p also kind of footage, I'm actually inside of my studio. What was also very interesting is when I was running at 90 hertz smooth mode inside of my studio with the wall and the door closed in between was the fact that when I was in the scene where you're told to flick your wrist and to try to bring objects to your hand and then grab those objects, it just wasn't possible to do it. I wasn't using necessarily a different flicking of the wrist technique as I was in the HD mode, of course, or in the previous video with the 72 hertz for sure. So it just goes to show that perhaps it was a latency issue. And if there are any issues in terms of latency, then it will also falter other parts of the game, not only the graphics, as of course it is the most noticeable in terms of the compression compared to 90 Hz HD, when I'm actually next to the actual router, a couple meters away in the same room. So I thought that was a very, very interesting test there in terms of the feedback. I didn't feel that it was actually relevant to do the smooth mode next to the router, because as you can tell already, there are a lot of differences, which to me, are very much night and day when I have the headset on. Now the comfort of the headset, by the way, I was recording for many, many hours, I would say a good two, two and a half hours. I have no issue whatsoever. It is super light and super, super comfortable. Although you may have a red mark after you remove the headset, but it is very important, of course, to keep it snug on your face and not too tight. Now the compression when I'm running at 720p or the smooth kind of uh, resolution, I have to admit that when I'm away from the router inside of my studio, about 10 meters away, and I have the wall and also a door in between, well, I do have, I don't really have a lot of crackling of the sound as I did, for example, in HD mode. And do go and check out last week's video when I did some footage at uh, HD, uh, when I'm inside of the actual studio running at 72 Hertz and not 90 Hertz. There is noticeably a lot more crackling in the sound. Um, and also, you know, the footage will stop here and there. There will definitely be much more latency when I'm running at HD for sure, compared to 90 Hertz at smooth mode. When I'm running at 90 Hertz smooth mode, I do get latency here and there, it is very, very true. Sometimes I have some pairing issues and also especially when I'm running the graphics on the PC itself at ultra high definition, the actual computer will sometimes stop completely working and it I have to basically run the computer at medium settings if I when I'm running 90 Hertz at smooth mode. However, when I'm running right next to the router at 90 Hertz, HD mode, oh man, it's really cool. I have no crackling of sound whatsoever. The latency is absolutely perfect. The graphics, I wouldn't say, of course, compared to the HP Reverb D2 are perfect, far from it. But compared to, let's say, the 72 Hertz at HD mode, yes, there is noticeably a big difference. But as I mentioned before, you would not be able to run the 90 Hertz at Wi-Fi 5 or with an RTX 2070, let's say, away from the router, 10 meters away in a separate room with a wall in between and the door closed. It just is not possible. There'll be completely too much latency, too much stopping, 
And you know, I do put the test at the end of this video, so do wait for it as I will provide you more tips here in terms of what my experience was with the actual Pico. And by the way, for those who have been asking me in terms of the IPD, now the IPD is not 62 mm guys. When you reach 62 mm, there's actually going to be a pop-up inside of your Pico 4 headset. And all you have to do is to let you know that if you go below 62 mm IPD, then what's going to happen is that you may have some clipping of the lenses touching your nose. So all you have to do is remove the actual pop-up by clicking the X button and then you can basically adjust the IPD all the way down to 58 mm guys and I have to admit that with me even though I think I have kind of a normal nose when it comes to Caucasian noses but I don't feel the actual uh, lenses clip my nose so I think most people will be okay but they did put the notification there the pop-up there just in case you know some of you may have some discomfort but yes that's right the IPD starts at 68 mm and goes all the way sorry 58 mm and goes all the way to 72 mm also in terms of the resolution inside of the actual Pico 4 headset itself it is not 4k per eye guys I do need to make this very clear I have been told by the actual developers that the uh, resolution inside of the Pico 4 is 4 0.3k per eye and not 2160 by 2160 just FYI it is actually supposed to be better than the HP Reverb G2 which is 2160 by 2160. Now when we did a battery test yesterday we had about 83% running inside of the Pico 4 and I was running of course Arizona Sunshine and Ultimax on the standalone version however I was also casting inside and also using the adapter to be able to have the headphones attached as well. Now, these kind of things when you're screen casting and you have headphones to the actual headset, it will also use some of the battery. So I was only able to use about 90 minutes or 95 minutes on the stream itself so you can go and check the stream as well after this video of course however if you don't cast and perhaps you don't have any headphones attached to your Pico 4 it is possible because it is supposed to run up to 2.5 hours on the actual headset that will be released to the general public and about three hours if you're watching for example some movies. I have also tested the headset in many different kind of lighting conditions and I have to admit that it doesn't matter if there are too many lights completely directed at me the headset will actually perform really well and really does not lose any tracking whatsoever I must admit and then I also used it when I don't have that many lights so I just have one key light directed towards me and also the tracking is equally very very good I must admit that the tracking is just phenomenal with the Pico 4 absolutely phenomenal so coming back to the actual graphic differences in terms of the gameplay in Half-Life Alex using the Pico 4 when you're streaming completely wirelessly to Steam VR I have to admit that you definitely see it in the dark areas when you're streaming at 90 Hertz smooth gameplay away from the router inside of let's say another room with a wall in between and a door closed as well now in the dark areas you're really going to see so much compression it's really really noticeable and really uncomfortable i have to admit and they're also before the scenes load or you have animations and all these kind of things you will also have quite a lot of issues a lot of compression there sometimes you will also get some latency in the actual controllers themselves as well so you just need to be mindful about that however when you're running a 90 hertz hd and you're right next to the router you will not get all these kind of issues the gameplay itself is more or less completely smooth just no issues whatsoever i'm actually really happy to be able to do the 90 hertz at hd next to the router now if you see the footage running here you'll notice that now i'm inside of the actual studio again as well and this is where i'm actually running 90 hertz at hd mode inside of the studio as well and you can tell i mean i've had so many issues 
of course, in a software update in the future. And it is possible that when you receive your own headset, it will, of course, not be a test headset. As I mentioned before, I'm using the test headset and I do have written permission by Pico, so hi Pico team if you're watching, as I do have written permission to use it to showcase it in today's video. Now, I have so many glitches at the beginning when the game is loading for the first time, nothing is moving inside of the headset. The latency is just, oh, incredibly, incredibly just not on par whatsoever. And I just can't see anything. However, after the scene kind of loads and you know, it takes a few minutes there to load, then it seems that I am able to see at least, but then the actual controllers will have so much lagging. It is just a big no-no, big no-no. But again, when I wait another minute or so, I find that the controllers are actually okay. They kind of like, everything needs to just load inside of the headset, but you can clearly tell that I'm just not able to, you know, get the latency to be one-to-one, -one, although after a while it seems to be okay. So then I'm able to move around, but again, I do get, you know, latency. I can't really see things properly, but the graphics, as you can tell, there is not that much compression, even when, you know, I, I, I magnify things, it just seems to be really okay. So it's good that it goes to show that in a future, perhaps up there, as I mentioned before, things will be okay. But as I start to play and carry on, you know, things basically start to go haywire again. And, you know, there'll be choppiness. Um, you know, the animation, when I see on the screen, just isn't fluid. And, you know, things just, you know, just don't work properly. But it is possible that with a better graphics card, for example, a 380 series, you may have a better experience. And also, if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router or a Wi-Fi 6 uh, internet ISP service provider as well, then it is very possible that these things won't be as noticeable comparing to when I'm using the RTX 2070 and also the Wi-Fi 6 ISP and the Wi-Fi 6 router. So there you go, guys. That's some side-by-side -side footage today recording using Half-Life Alex streaming completely wirelessly using the 90 hertz today and not the 72 hertz. Do go and check out, as I mentioned before, the previous video after this video of the 72 hertz, comparing it with smooth gameplay and also HD streaming directly from my actual studio and not away from the studio where I'm completely right next to the actual router about a couple meters away. In the previous footage, in the previous video, excuse me, I'm actually away with a door in between and also a wall in between. And I think you'd be pretty amazed in terms of the actual gameplay and resolution there compared to today's video. So guys, do smash the likes as I mentioned before and also the notification bell after you subscribe as I will bring you some brand new footage using the Pico 4, of course, very soon. All right, I'll see you in the next video very shortly. See you later, guys. Take it easy.